During the annual two sessions of March 2022, one key phrase frequently deployed by Chinese policymakers was 稳中求进 or seeking progress and stability in English, which seeks to encapsulate China's dual miracle of economic development and social stability. China has continued to create an atmosphere for people to live and work in peace and contentment, while social order and stability continue to prevail. This forms a stark contrast with the political upheavals, social divisions, and regional conflicts in certain other countries with their systemic ills. How has China achieved long-term social stability, and how will Beijing maintain this momentum in times of crisis? What do you think are the major indicators when measuring the level of social stability in a country? Based on such indicators, how do you evaluate China's social stability compared with Western countries? Some indicators of building a peaceful China. I think there are three very important indicators that people can view directly. The first one is life expectancy. The second is the crime rate, and the third is social trust. Average life expectancy has continually risen since the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949. When the PRC was newly founded, the average life expectancy was about 35 years old. Now, according to data from 2018, it has reached 77 years old, a doubling of the previous number. This reflects China's social stability. And、um, therefore, I got lots of information about how China was dealing with COVID from my friends and, and colleagues in China. I feel much, much more unsafe in Britain than I do in China, and this is not a joke. I mean, there are, you know, well over a hundred thousand people have died in Britain.、Uh, the whole population has been affected by COVID, and so at every level, from the situation of freedom of crime, it's much more dangerous. To be in Britain from a crime point of view, this in China, through to being saved from COVID,、um, I'm just very envious of my Chinese friends.、I'm, so, from every point of view, it's much better and much safer to be in China than it is to be in Britain. I think another big difference between Chinese and Western societies, possibly, is that there is a higher level of political trust. That means that the relationship between the state and society, or the relationship between the people and the government, is more harmonious in China. So you can see that the surveys conducted by some polling organizations show that political trust in China is much higher than that in Western society. This can also explain why in China we can carry out many big projects and events, and some important government measures can be easily accepted by the public. We know that American political thinker Samuel Huntington once said, "Modernity breeds stability, but modernization breeds instability." Meaning that if a country develops at a fast pace, there is a high chance of social unrest, which has been vindicated in some Latin American and Arab countries. But China has done quite a good job in keeping both economic growth and social stability at the same time. So, what do you think that China has done right to keep this dual miracle? And I think the reason China is able to maintain a, a stability while having fast growth is this: is that this growth indeed benefits most of the population in, in China. So, in the past four decades, hundreds of millions of people in China. Were lifted out of poverty. They had a much better, completely different living standard, which they could never dream of、uh, 40 years ago. Which shows that this growth indeed benefits、um, majority of the social class. So it's like everyone is better off. So in economics, we call this a Pareto improvement. China's modern political system actually has a very important feature called diversity in the unity. The whole of society is diverse, with different interests, ideas, and even conflicts. But at the same time, we have interconnectivity through the party throughout society. Modern Chinese society is an organic and united one, and the party acts as the bonding agent at its heart. Chinese modernization is indeed inclusive; everyone can participate and share.
the Chinese style governance actually differs from the Western style governance. What kinds of advantages do you think that the Chinese governance in terms of maintaining social stability? Well, I think the, mo the most important advantage is that it works, that it, it means that the, the conditions of the population get better. I think, for example, COVID is a most dramatic illustration of this. Um, there is a discussion which takes place about human rights, but the Western concept of human rights is absurd. It concentrates on the biggest question of human rights, apparently, is such things as whether you can use Facebook or not. In the advanced countries, around 2 million people have died from COVID. In China, 5, 000, mainland China, 5,000 people have died. The biggest illustration of the fact that the Chinese system works is it's keeping its population alive. Whereas in the West, in the United States, where around a million people have died, this is something really terrible, what is happening in the West. Our governance system is highly responsive. This kind of responsiveness not only means that questions are being answered, but also, more importantly, problems are being solved. This is also a huge difference between Chinese and Western governance systems. Ours is very responsive and is directly related to the role of the ruling party in the system of integrating legislative and executive powers. And common prosperity is also one of the catchphrases we heard recently. So what's your understanding of China's common prosperity? Well, I think the phrase itself uh, mostly means a more equitable uh, growth. And um, I would say, um, as what we have discussed uh, earlier, probably uh, a better coverage of uh, social security, a stronger social safety net. A social insurance system should be more equitable, starting with all different types of uh, insurances. For instance, the, the pension um, insurance system should be more redistributive, and that would also lead to um, growth. The CPC and China's social system ensures that, firstly, that the economy grows, that the cake has to get bigger, but secondly, that this cake must be divided up in such a way that everybody gets more of the cake. If the population doesn't benefit, then you get great uh, instability. Obviously, China's poverty alleviation program has been absolutely the, the best in the world, taking more than 850 million people out of poverty by in World Bank standards. Through to the well-off, everybody is getting better off, and this creates, therefore, um, conditions for stability in the country.